everybody. <laughs> we are on our way to the airport to go to Florida to do ayahuasca. Um, as you can see, my eyes are swollen. I did have, I did almost have an anaphylactic shock attack last night. Um, thank God it only got my eyes. Uh, I took the allergy pill that I have prescribed and my EpiPen for the first time. Um, on top of that, the entire week, I feel like I've been getting stabbed in my throat, but I have no other symptoms. No other symptoms except for just horrible, horrible pain in my throat where it feels like I'm being stabbed, especially when I'm sleeping. <clears throat> You're just gonna keep going straight. So, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on, y'all, but I was not gonna let that stop me from making my flight. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if it's voodoo, spiritual attacks. I don't know. I'm going. So we're on our way to our third ayahuasca ceremony. Let's go. All right, guys. I made it to Florida. Oh, my ears are like congested. I made it to Florida. Here I am at the Tampa airport. It is very, very hot. You definitely feel that Florida heat right when you land. Um, I was supposed to have a ride, but she can't come, so I have to get an Uber. Ubers are uber expensive. They're like $70. I was able to find a lift for 50 So, that's what we're doing. My swelling has gone down, so that's good. Um, I was trying to sleep on the plane, but I was in the aisle seat right next to the bathroom and people kept bumping into me every time they went to the bathroom. And then the guy in the window seat had a dog and wanted to take the dog out. And I said, no, I'm allergic. I literally just went to say a plastic shop last night. Let's not. So he didn't, thank God. But yeah. So every step of the way has been a challenge. So I hope that uh, this better be like the best ayahuasca journey I've ever been on. <laughs> but it's testing my patience and honestly, I'm like pretty chill about everything. It is what it is. We're just rolling with the punches, baby. Hello everybody. It is Friday. It is the day of ceremony, um, August 30th. Um, so, I was in so much freaking pain last night. I I was like, I have to have strep throat or tonsillitis. Um, I was getting like the white spotting in the back of my throat. My ears were hurting. I could not freaking sleep. I was in so much pain. I was like, I just want to go to the doctor. I just want to get some antibiotics. Oh, I'm so much pain. Because this pain started Monday night. We're on Friday now. Um, but... I can't get on any medication if I'm gonna do ayahuasca. So I just had to deal with the pain this whole week. And last night, I literally was like, I need, I posted on Instagram, everybody please send me healing vibes, healing energy. <laughs> um, I put on some, I took an ibuprofen, I took ibuprofen for the swelling cause it was very swollen. Um, I put on some binaural beats to remove toxins from the throat chakra and, um, the shaman that I am working with gave me this spray. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I looked it up and the spray comes from a golden Aztec root. It's actually from a flower and it's alcohol based and it helps kill the bacteria in your mouth. So I sprayed that a few times last night and it hurt really bad and it's really cool when you spray it everything tingles in your mouth it's just like you can feel your entire mouth alive and so i was like oh my god this is crazy but it was like hurting so bad but on top of that while i was playing the binaural beats you know i just finished listening to um, becoming supernatural by dr dispensa and so i knew that i had to shift my mindset i had to shift from like this hurts so bad i'm in so much pain to like I am healed. I am better by the morning. My throat feels better by the morning. Like I envisioned my throat being healed by the time I woke up. Like I had to rewire my brain to heal myself. And I woke up this morning feeling so much better. Like I looked at my throat and the white spotting is pretty much all gone. Um, I will say it feels like the infection maybe moved more to, towards my ears because my ears are a bit clogged, but I feel so much better than I have been feeling the rest of the week because I was in so much pain. I was like, I don't want to purge with my throat hurting this bad. 
So I think a mix of all of that together helped me self heal. And normally I would be at the doctor, I would be getting antibiotics. That's what I wanted to do so freaking bad, but ugh, I gotta sneeze. But um, I couldn't. And honestly, I did some research and if you don't take antibiotics, something could take seven days to heal. Whereas if you take antibiotics, it could take 6.2. So it's not really that big of a difference. Um, so I, I was like, this is, this is a test. Let's see if I can heal myself through this. And obviously I'm saying whatever y'all want to do, you can do. Obviously if it's something serious, definitely get antibiotics. You know, if you have bacterial or, or viral infection or anything like that. Um, but I couldn't this time. And so I had to use more natural remedies and yeah, it may take a little bit of time, but, but my body is healing itself. And so that is really, really cool to witness. This is exactly what I've been working on. This is exactly what I've been wanting to do. So I am so happy that I am getting to experience this in real time. My eye is still a little swollen. That's going to go down. And, um, and then we have ceremony today. So in a few hours we start and I will tell you guys all about it. <laughs> Space. We got some of the mats. We're getting ready for ceremony. Okay guys, um, first of all, I kind of lost my voice. I look a mess. So uh, last night I journeyed. I'm gonna tell y'all about that. But I wanna introduce you guys. This is Lucy. And okay, Lucy, tell them what you just told me. Um, So basically it's like full circle because, so I started my awakening and my whole journey about um, a year, uh, two years ago. And Alex is, I think TikTok? Yeah. popped up and I started following her because I really loved you know her journey and everything that she spoke about so then eventually I found ayahuasca through her and I found the shaman Taita Pedro that she had actually sat with in California um so it's full circle because now I am here facilitating at the retreat that you know her third ayahuasca retreat so it's honestly full circle isn't that it's crazy? amazing oh my god and last night when we were done they were like food's ready i'm like you don't gotta tell me twice <laughs> i got up and uh, she was serving the soup and she's like are you like hungry hungry and i was like girl i've been hungry for like a week i'm ready for a burger <laughs> like serve me a whole bowl of soup it was so good and i told her i love her hair it's so cute i love her hair i've always but loved her hair let me tell you something which i have to tell the story in here but when last night after the first cup the first cup didn't really hit so i had a journal with me because she said to bring a journal mm -hmm. and a journal with me and um i had already written in it last year um i was writing my dreams down and so i was like oh i'm bored i'm gonna read through my dreams so i started reading through them and one of them i was like I dreamt about Lucy in the sky with diamonds and I was like oh which actually is just LSD but then like how crazy because that I read so that crazy. last night and then you're like yeah I'm Lucy and I'm like what the Whoa. fuck and then I come and I tell you this story yeah, today. Today, wow. like everything is so connected everything how connected. freaking cool is that I love it when people tell me like oh I found it because of you I'm like yeah, yeah it's true bring though people together and you know I haven't done it in like two years I was so scared so girl I'm glad this was a good job. Well, I'm glad you're here. Yes. I'm glad I'm you took glad the, the step. Yay. Oh, I we'll love keep that. connecting. Yes, love you guys. we're ready for night two. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, look at the beautiful sky. Look at the clouds. They're so freaking cutie patooties. It is very, very hot though. And we're about to start day two. It's um like three o'clock. And we're about to start our second journey. Oh my gosh. He's mine. He's mine, but you know he really really Okay guys, we're literally about to start our second and last journey. And it is thundering out here. It's thundering and the wind is blowing. So 
Are we gonna get rained on? Are we gonna dance in the rain? Are we gonna get cleansed by the rain? Perhaps. Let's look at the sky. There are some rain clouds above us. But it's gonna be good. Oh, look how cute. Oh, it's starting to drizzle. It's starting to drizzle. My bed is right there. Um, so I'm not in a very good spot if it starts to rain, but we'll be okay. We'll be okay. It's officially raining, you guys. It is officially raining. We're getting cleansed. We're cleansing before we drink. Let the rain fall down. It's so nice though. It never rains in San Diego. Not really. So, this is Florida for ya. Um, we're oh apparently we're missing oh, a you book didn't pick for one this. of these. Check cards. Oh, this I feel like this matches me right now. Oh, it does. Wings. Wings. It does. Wings. 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 Shikana, Ken of the Red Hawk festival. Tribe. Hey, this looks like a oh, bull. I'm a Taurus and I have red hair. Yeah, that's a good one. I love that. I got one, got one. Let's see what you got. <laughs> what? <laughs> you got, you got, you got, oh, wait, you got two of the same one. Yeah. Yeah, I got two of the same one? Yeah. Yeah. I pulled two from the same deck, yeah. 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 Abuela Medicine. Oh, I love that. Remedy of the Grandmothers. Yes, Perfect. beautiful. What? One from this deck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you say the hope is better than yours? Ooh, bold step forward to the far farther gate. Okay, love that. Look at the sky. Oh, fifty-five. I appreciate that. Angel number fifty-five. Um, send it to me. Did you oh, see okay. This one? <laughs> back. I was like, okay, let's see what other card right, is calling girl, to me. Let's go. Like. <laughs> oh my god i was seeing this last night in my journey i kept seeing cat eyes oh my god what well, there the you fuck go. cat so or pillar opportunity oh number four look my ziploc is number four she said you're gonna be grounding and i was number four four angel number 55 55 is 10. Cat one. opportunity. I legit was seeing this in my journey last night, dude. I kept seeing these eyes. Oh, that's wild. It is wild. Oh, that is so cool. I kept seeing these eyes over and over and over, and I was like, how do I keep seeing these eyes? It was like snake and cat eyes. I saw what I first thought was I believe Okay, she's got a little shop here with all her things. How freaking cute is that? Super adorable. I love it. So cute. Some more clothes out there. We're still waiting to start the second journey. So I figured I'd show you guys all the cute stuff. Super cute. Good morning, everybody. It is day three of the retreat we're not drinking any medicine today we're just having activities but i wanted to show you guys the ayahuasca tree okay so this tree um it's got the ayahuasca oh there's a lizard it's got the ayahuasca vine on it look how beautiful it is so it's got um ayahuasca comes from a vine and a plant so i'm i'm thinking it's okay i'm just guessing i could always ask but I think it's the leaf. It's like the bark of the vine or something. So I guess this or this. It's this, this stuff. You mix it together and you make a brew. Oh, there's a little lizard. So this is her ayahuasca tree. And she grows it right here. So beautiful. And that's why it's so powerful. And everybody's cleaning up today, getting ready for activities. So my journey was amazing, amazing. Um, I took notes last night because the first day, I forgot, I pretty much forgot what happened the first day. So I took notes last night. So I will be going over that and breaking everything down for you guys when I get a chance. <laughs> oh my God. 
I just did rape, which is like, I think it's like a tobacco. It's like a powder. And they blow it up your nose since I've been sick with these sinus issues. She's like, let's do it. I do not like doing it. I had to do it last time. This was not as bad as last time. Last time, my entire body was on fire. But it feels like they blow it up your nose and it goes to like the back of your fucking brain. Like I felt it back here. And it goes in each nostril. Oh my God. This is all just paper towels of me blowing my nose. I'm so congested now. I wasn't congested here earlier. It's just like my ears and my throat's hurting, but it's supposed to help and um, oh my God, I can at least open my eyes now. I was so dizzy. It makes you like dizzy. I'm like tears coming out. I couldn't stop sneezing and I'm congested, but I think it's clearing up. Oh my God, that better help me because I was not planning on doing that. Thank you all for the trust. Thank you for staying the whole weekend for doing your work. It is so magical to see you all in your power today, seeing the shift, seeing the connection, seeing the awareness within your being. It's truly been an honor for me to hold this frequency, this space for all of you. Mm. Look how beautiful the sky looks right now. Oh my god, it was like literally thunderstorming. It's so pretty. And then this tree, I was hugging this tree during my the first night. I gave it a big hug. I wanted to be inside of this tree. Oh my god, it was amazing. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about it, bitches. Okay, um, I was not planning on filming this right now. I think that I'm gonna lose light for sure. It's 4.30. Um, I can't really hear anything. My ears are completely clogged and I have the AC running. And honestly, I don't even know what I'm gonna say. I have been, I don't, I clearly, I haven't washed my hair in like so long. I'm going to the Springs tomorrow. So I'm like, I'm just gonna wash it after I go to the Springs and this is just going to be in the raw because I legitimately don't know it, what I'm going to say. Um, but I figured I'm still here. It's fresh. Might as well go for it. So let's go. Okay. I turned the AC off because I think it was too loud and it was affecting the sound. So hopefully it sounds better now. Okay. It does. I just look back at it. <laughs> I look back at it. Okay. <clears throat> so let's um you guys saw some clips already from me being here um so that's that i don't have to break all that down um let's start from the beginning why did i decide to do ayahuasca again um <laughs> okay hold on okay so you guys know that uh the last time i did ayahuasca was in may and august of 2022 
Uh, this shirt is from The Medicine Mama, um, my friend Emily. I wore it the day I came. I'm wearing it today. I, I ran out of clothes, y'all. Anyway, um, so, and look, the little wasp. This wasp has been visiting me this whole time. So, if you've been watching my Instagram stories, you'd know. Okay, so in May and August, I did ayahuasca, and they were very tough journeys. They both are up on here on my YouTube. You guys can watch them. Um, and the second ceremony was so rough on my body that I didn't want to come back. I didn't want to come back to do Aya. Um, I needed time to integrate. I was definitely like doing a lot at once, you know, when I was do when I did ayahuasca, I did ayahuasca in May. I did Cambo. I did Bufo. I did like acid in between that. <laughs> Probably some shrooms. I was again, like I was going ham. And so with my second ayahuasca ceremony, my guides were like, okay, you need to integrate. So take a break, take a chill pill and, um, you know, go from there. So I did, I integrated for two years to the point where I didn't want to come back in the two years. I did shrooms and acid here and there, and that was it. Um, I didn't want to come back and do a ceremony, but I knew that I would eventually be back because she was calling me back. She'd been telling me for a minute. I had a friend. I have a friend, Tana, who's a channeler who channeled my higher self and told me you're going to be going back to doing at least one more ayahuasca ceremony. I said, I don't want to. And she said, I know, but you're going to. <laughs> and <clears throat> she had also told me that I should um, really reconnect with music and she saw she saw me playing like a maraca or something that was interesting okay so anyway um i've been putting it off and then for my birthday this year in may of 2024 i did shrooms and i heard you have to go back and do ayahuasca and i was like i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to they said well you're gonna have to well not even like a day later literally um, Tefa, the shaman who does, who runs this, Pacha, Pacha Ma, Mama, I think, Pacha Mama, sorry, I don't know how to say it right, she messages me, so she is Taita Pedro's, the shaman Pedro, um, from the first two ceremonies, she is, she was his apprentice, she's been doing this for five years, and, um, she does it in Florida, in, around Tampa, Florida, and, um, we only knew each other through social media, so, she messages me and she said hi um i'm being called to tell you that you need to do ayahuasca again <laughs> and i said i know i know she's been calling me and i don't want to and she said well you can come here i got you um she said i'm doing a women's retreat and honestly she had been telling me for a while like she actually had messaged me i think a year ago and told me i totally forgot about that this just came to my memory i need to talk to her about that she had told me like a year ago like oh if you ever want to come and i was like yeah yeah whenever i'm ready and i just never did i just put it off well this time was more like now now's the time so she's like hey i'm being told that you need to come and she told me i'm having a woman's retreat it's a lot smaller um you know she's got room accommodations like it's great okay so I said, okay, I was able to find a flight for literally like $300 to go from California to Florida. Amazing. And, um, and, and I came, um, I was nervous. It wasn't something that I really wanted to do. It was something that I knew I had to do. I didn't know what she was going to show me, but I was like, if she's pushing me this hard. And when I say she, I'm talking about the medicine, ayahuasca, we call her mama Aya. I said, if she's pushing me this hard, then she has something she wants to show me and I just have to listen. I never asked Tefa until now, and I'll tell you guys the story, um, what made her reach out to me. So she said that around April, she was doing another ceremony near Orlando, which is where I grew up. And she got the image of me in her head and she was like oh okay that's random she cleanses her energy because she's like that was so weird like maybe it's because i saw her on instagram or something yeah 
um and that was around april 18th to the 22nd and my mom's birthday is april 24th and that is significant because this is a woman's retreat and it is a womb healing ceremony so it is you know based on a lot of, around a lot of womb trauma mom trauma that kind of thing so it was interesting that she started getting the message again very strongly around my mom's birthday while she's in orlando where i grew up then she said that she um you know was here on her property and again boom my face pops up again and she was like oh hold on this is like a message because she's like i've already cleared my energy there's no reason for me for me to keep thinking about this girl i don't know this girl so she saw that and then she um opens up instagram and i'm the first person that pops up and she's like okay so she was like the medicine was telling her you need to tell her that she needs to come back so she did so she messaged me in may after my birthday so she started getting the messages in april very strongly she tells me in may after my birthday after may 20th she says hey i'm being told you need to come back and do aya and i said i i literally just got the message on my birthday i know and so i decided to come um so that's how it happened so it was a telepathic message from the medicine that connected both of us and and then and that's it so the way that the medicine works is it starts working in you before you even um do anything now it's already been in my system you know it's already been the medicine the spirit of the medicine is already inside me it's been within me the last two years so it was calling me again and things start showing up in your life that are going to have to do with your journey right before it happens the first time i went viral in april of 2022 and i go to ayahuasca in may of 2022 and that journey really also helped me with my content as you guys know i hit the 1 million in between those the two ceremonies i hit 1 million on july 17th i go viral 44 2022 so 444 i go with my 36 million calendar video 36 million views i hit 1 million in july in august i go do ayahuasca um i go no contact with my parents specifically my mother my dad was just kind of like um you know guilty by association he has his own shit too they're both emotionally immature but you guys know the story i've told you guys about it um i went no contact august 30th or august 31st so it was around those dates august 30th august 31st so this ceremony fell on august 30th through the 31st of 2024 two-year anniversary since i went no contact so everything is already lining up perfectly okay so leading up to it and i have to mention this which like i'm uncomfortable and i don't want to talk about this but it's part of my journey so i have to um if you guys didn't know last summer last july in 2023 last july and august it's like this is like a very the summer just seems like a very portal that shoots me into other you know timelines i went to new york and i realized i like girls so i thought i was straight up until i was 36 i like this girl we have an experience it was not good um i did tell the story it's like a tiktok live um that i told it where i was like my first experience with a girl or something it's up on youtube but um it was just not a good experience but i realized i like girls so for the last year i have been um you know actively e exploring that but not actually like doing anything about it except for going out meeting girls getting to know them talking to them but nothing physical i haven't actually really dated anyone um i've i've been single pretty much since like i want to say the beginning of 2022 um i was dating my ex um but you know i knew that that wasn't gonna work out we ended it at the end of 2021 we've stayed friends um but we've been but i've been single i haven't hooked up with anyone i haven't done anything just because like during this whole journey you know i used to give myself away easier to people just for that feeling of closeness the feeling of love the feeling of validation whatever the case may be and it was the wrong people it was the wrong people but you know i mean everything there's no right or wrong everything's just an experience but 
in the grand scheme of things like it was not the right people that I should have been with but it was part of my journey and um and during this journey now that I've done this whole awakening I really was like I don't want to share that with anybody I don't want to just give myself to anybody I want it to be more special than it's ever been before which is crazy because as a Christian I didn't care but now that I'm in this spiritual journey I care <laughs> because as a Christian I was just told more of like your body is your temple and like you know don't just go around sleeping with anybody like you need to be married you know like that's what it's for and I'm like well I don't want to get married so I don't care I just want to fuck you know what I'm saying um and so I didn't care about that but like after I started this whole awakening journey I and I've really been working on myself really going within and really healing my chakras and everything I realized and going through my kundalini awakening I realized I don't want to share that energy with just anybody I've worked so hard on myself people don't deserve my energy people don't deserve that from me like I mean, I know it's an energy exchange now. I get it. I understand that people carry shit with them. And when you exchange that energy, that shit can transfer onto you. I get it now. I didn't get it before. So because of that, even though I have been going out and meeting girls and whatever, I haven't kissed anybody. I haven't hooked up with anybody. I haven't dated anybody. Like I've liked girls, tried to get to know them see the red flags leave so this past year has really been about um you know getting to know people and then learning um that i am attracted to the toxicity what is the toxicity that i'm attracted to why am i attracted to the toxicity oh because it's all i know it's what's familiar okay you know you're used to the up and down and so it's like yeah the, the dopamine that your brain releases the toxicity so i was you know, I, I really was learning a lot about myself and like why I do the things that I do, why I like the people that I like. That's instant spark, that instant chemistry, the instant butterflies are not good. It's just your body reacting to what it's familiar and doesn't mean it's good. So through that, um, I've really just learned a lot in this last year. And I've really, you guys know, I, I meditate daily. I meditate every single day for the last two years. Um, I journal I do all of the work I manifest I have vision boards um you know I do everything that I have to do to keep myself on this path because it's working for me if I was doing something wrong things wouldn't be going so right and I'm putting myself first so through this journey um in this last year I've had fun but not like no sexual fun because I I'm really holding on tight to that sacral chakra. And I know it's what I'm now going to be working on um, in this healing process. So when this opportunity came up, it just came up at the perfect time. And I was like, yeah, it's time. I really have to work on my sacral. I have it very blocked right now um, because I'm holding on so tight to it. And I know that I have to relax a little bit. It doesn't mean that I need to like sleeve around. It just is like, hey, it's okay to like allow yourself to enjoy things again that you used to enjoy that I haven't been enjoying for like a very long time so I haven't really met anybody that I was into until recently so I met this girl in July it's always July so I met this girl in July and we hit it off we hit it off in a way of like we get along well and we are like we like each other but we both were like oh we don't i don't know if i want a relationship she you know we both just said we didn't know if we wanted a relationship we're just seeing what happens but we talked for a month and very slow we're just taking things slow because what's the rush right uh, in lesbian world a month is a long time okay so we saw each other three times out of that month but we talk every single day um, like texting every day getting to know each other and we went on three dates and they were great still nothing physical happened no kissing no nothing because we both want to take it slow so everything was going fine um but there was there was um one moment where oh okay so we went on our first date 
and then we were and i have to tell you guys all this backstory before i can tell you about my ayahuasca trip okay so we went on one date and we had planned for another date she ends up not feeling well we have to reschedule the day that we reschedule her barber cancels on her last minute and she didn't feel comfortable going out without having her hair done so she as she actually technically did not cancel she said would you hate me because i said oh you're not bothered enough to where you want to cancel and she said well would you hate me and i said actually yeah that's completely rude vain and considerate and i kind of went off a little bit and she was like okay well i'm gonna have to take a minute to think about this because i realize i'm being selfish by not thinking about how it would affect you and maybe i just i need i need some space kind of thing and i was like yeah and i was really upset i was actually really upset and <coughs> when i get upset i cry i am so i was emotional i was very emotional about it and i started thinking why am i so emotional and so upset about this girl canceling if i didn't want anything so for a week we barely talked it was like not like we were talking or before we were talking consistently so for this week it was like eh, you know here or there and so i was like okay i guess like we're kind of done essentially but i really missed her i missed talking to her and so i was like fuck like i want to talk to her again so a week later i kind of reach out a little more um and i make a flirty joke and we get back into it so we get back into talking normally and so we're talking and then we decide let's go out so we went out the next day to dinner and we went out to gossip girl if you guys don't know the lesbian bar and we had a great time we had a great great time um and you know we were like she was like i don't want to stop talking to you i was like i don't want to stop talking to you and she's like i never i didn't think i ever stopped talking to you and i was like i mean it felt like it to me because you weren't communicating with me like you were before she's like well sometimes when things like that happen like i just need to give myself some space and distance just to kind of like recollect my thoughts and see where i'm at and i'm like i get it same we went out the next day again had a great time and things were going really well things are going well we're talking every day consistently she texts me every morning good morning when she wakes up at like 6 a.m to go to the gym and i love that and i told her i love your good morning text like it's so nice to wake up to so we're talking consistently and mind you she had told me from the beginning that she is not a phone person that if it was up to her she would not have a phone but that she does talk to me and i was like oh like that made me feel good and i told her i on the first day i have a problem with clinginess and limerence i'm working on that this is important because it comes up during the journey okay so we're talking completely fine and the 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 weekend that we saw each other we saw each other friday and saturday is the weekend before this weekend so literally last weekend <laughs> literally last weekend okay and everything's going fine i do not see her except for the that until i come um, i don't see her before i fly out here so i just saw her that weekend we're talking fine everything's great and then i come out here and i come out here and now i do want to say that right before i came out here I start getting sick. So on Monday, my tonsils start swelling. I'm thinking I'll be fine. It is now Sunday. No, it is now Monday. We're on day seven. So the next Monday, I'm still sick to the point where I ended up having to go to urgent care this morning to get amoxicillin because I have an ear and throat infection. So that starts the week before I do ayahuasca. The night before I come to ayahuasca, I start going to anaphylactic shock again for the fifth time in a year. I start going into anaphylactic shock and I have to stab myself with my EpiPen because I was like, I have a flight to catch in a few hours. It was like there were so many things trying to stop me from coming and I could have used any of those as an excuse not to come because I originally didn't want to come in the first place. So I could have said, oh, I can't come. I'm sick. Oh, I can't come. I went to anaphylactic shock. I could have made up excuses. Excuse me while I drink from my cutie little cup. Taurus queen. So... I could have made up excuses but I said no I've got my flight booked and I don't have it insured and I will be there hell or high water 
yeah, I didn't want to go at first, but I've made a commitment now and I will go. So I take my flight Thursday morning, bright and early, and I get here. I get here, Thursday's fine again, her and I are texting completely normal, and then Thursday night comes around, everything is still normal, I'm spending time now inside talking to the shaman, Tefa. I'm talking to her, and I'm not really worried about texting this girl because I'm busy. And I'm three hours ahead of her now, where she's three hours behind me, so... Uh, there was a point where she didn't text me for, well, she takes a little bit to text in between, but this time she took an hour to text me and she was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. I thought I had replied. And I was like, and I, I didn't say anything. I think she just checked her phone and realized she hadn't replied to my last text. And I was like, oh, no worries. Like I thought you were out or something. So I'm being super chill. Then I'm done for the night. I go to wind down and I start being weird. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, like I'm now on property. It's the night before ayahuasca. I'm, I just got done talking to the shaman. All of a sudden, I start getting weird. And I text her. She doesn't reply fast enough for me, I guess. And I double text her. Uh, are you okay? I double text her and I sent her the little like side eye. And she was like, side eye back. And I was like, you left me hanging. She's like, oh, sorry. Like, I'm just in my own world. She was watching a movie. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? That was weird. Okay, well, it gets weirder. The next morning, I wake up. And I remember, I'm three hours ahead of her. So I'm up at nine. She's up at six. I see that she went to the gym. And she didn't text me good morning. And so I get upset about that. Am I okay? I was like, oh, do I need to send? Do I need to send you like a text last so that you can text me good morning? Because she didn't text me good morning. And she goes, hey, good morning. Please don't take this the wrong way, but are you needy? Oh, uh, bitch, the way that I got so fucking triggered. Yeah, I got very triggered. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, oh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that, like, I don't know how you expect me to take that. You literally just called me needy um, because I like talking to you and I like your good morning text, which I had already told her before that I like. So... I was like, so my bad. And she was like, it was just a question. But last night you also like felt some type of way because I didn't text you fast enough. And like, I don't know if we have different expectations here, but like I told you that I'm just kind of chilling and like I'm not looking to be in a relationship. And I just got really triggered. Mind you, <laughs> I go to the bathroom, I realize I get my period. So I'm PMSing. Mm -hmm. So I'm PMSing, so I'm super emotional. So this is the part that I don't want to talk about because I hope she really doesn't see. I really hope she doesn't watch this because I am crying all morning. Like I'm crying all morning. There is just so much shit coming up. And it was just the medicine starting to work in me already. You know, it was the medicine because it was like, why did I act like that? Like, I don't. Yeah, I don't care. Like, I don't know why I was like acting so entitled like she doesn't owe me shit she doesn't owe me anything she doesn't have to text me good morning she's not my girlfriend she doesn't even have to text me at all if she doesn't want to it is a it is a privilege for her to share her energy with me just like it is a privilege for me to share my energy with anybody it is a privilege for me for you guys to be able to hear my stories i no one has to do anything if they don't want to and i of all people know that hello I literally cut my parents off because they were trying to control me. So who the fuck am I to sit here and act that way with this girl? It's like I got a little too comfortable. I got a little too comfortable. I got a little too bratty and a little too spoiled. And I fucking said that shit. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? What's wrong with me? It was my shadow self shit coming up. It was my old Alex shit. And I didn't realize it at the time. At the time... I'm like pissed off that she would say that. And we have a little conversation about it, you know, back and forth. And I was like, wait, but like, you don't want anything? Because like, what do you mean? I'm not gonna be wasting my time talking to you if you don't want something. And she's like, I mean, I'm down to like, she was like, I was down to see like what, what happens, but I know that I don't want a relationship because she was in two long-term relationships right before this. And so she's like, I don't want a relationship. I'm really enjoying being single right now. 
yeah like that makes sense and i know that and i told her that i'm like i know you're i know you need time for yourself like you know but we also like each other she's like i like you i enjoy talking to you i just don't want to i don't want to because i was like i don't want to get hurt like if if you're i don't want to waste my time if this is what you're saying like then why am i liking you i don't want to waste my time she's like well i'm not trying to hurt you i'm just telling you i don't want a relationship and all these feelings came up and i just couldn't stop crying and like the i'm laying in my little bed over here and the facilitators start coming in they're setting everything up and they see me crying and they all say something that like just make sense with what i'm going through but they didn't even know what i was going through like one of them said when my girlfriends are calling me a lot about some shit i say who is occupying your mind right now you should be focusing on yourself you're way too distracted with someone else why would she say that if she didn't know what i was going through like it was a message she also said you know she's um puerto rican and she said you know our our moms would always be like loud and let's go let's clean come on come on you know yeah mm -hmm, my mom and she said i learned something from my son my son said mom i can't hear you when you're talking like that i can hear you just fine if you talk to me like this softly kindly and that was like i was like wow because that's what i grew up around the yelling and thinking that if you're louder you get heard more you can talk kindly and and i can still hear you you don't have to talk to me that way so that was two things that she said that were exactly what i needed to hear because it also it, it goes with my journey you know it went with my journey so i'm crying the before the journey and i'm super emotional so we go to do like the introduction circles and um i say i've been crying so much i'm super in my feels so if you guys are definitely gonna see me cry tonight i'm sure i'm gonna purge and all this stuff and so you know get ready i was not in a good mood i didn't want to go into ceremony not being in a good mood i was in a good mood up until that morning until that text i was in a good mood and that completely shifted my energy and it put me in a bad mood and i was like upset that she said she didn't want to be in a relationship when like we'll talk about that so i'm like okay whatever all up in my feels right so we start night one now i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest with you i don't really remember a lot about night one um i'm gonna tell you what i remember um i couldn't journal because i was so under the medicine and it wasn't that bad but i was like really sleepy so i just couldn't pick up my pen to write but you guys know that i was scared to do this i didn't want to come um i didn't want to get sick i didn't want to taste the ayahuasca so every time i drink i plug my nose drink it i keep my nose plugged until i get back to my mat and next to my mat i have mouthwash and i have altoids and I keep my nose plugged until I put the mouthwash in my mouth. I literally drink a little bit of the mouthwash. I drink a little bit to get the fucking ayahuasca taste out of my mouth. And I eat Altoids. And then I sit. And I sit up. Because the minute you lay down, it'll like spread all over. And that will really make you throw up. So I sit up. I sit up until it settles. First cup she gave me was about half of a cup. Very small dose. So I was like, okay, not bad. I didn't really feel much so i didn't really feel much so what do i do i'm bored so i had a journal with me because she told us to bring a journal so i have a journal and i start reading it i'm reading my journal and my journal is actually a dream journal that i had written in it from october of last year and um i'm reading my dream so that's cool but then i start seeing that i'm reading things about my mom and my parents and i wrote i really need to go to therapy i have so much resentment towards them and i was like angry and as i'm reading it i'm like oh i don't feel that way anymore i, I actually am in therapy right now but not that it's really to me they don't really do much gotta be honest with you this is like fucking 30 years of therapy in one night okay so going to like regular traditional talk therapy it's like for me because i'm doing this i feel like i'm ahead of that like i i know more than the therapist to be honest with you um i'm giving it a shot just because like i'm always down to try new things and learn new things and and you know 
push myself to do to do more and I'm gonna try different avenues but to be honest this does a lot more plant medicine does a lot more than traditional therapy so um um so I I had written that and I was like oh I don't feel that way anymore like that's funny and I'm just like reading stuff that I was like oh yeah no I don't I don't feel that way oh well yeah no and I was like oh cool like good to see that I've come a pretty long way but so that was first cup and then you know she calls for second cup so I drink another cup and that one's bigger I told her I didn't feel anything first cup she's like gentle gentle I was like okay so she gives me a second cup and she gives me a full cup so I drink that and um and I was just like to be honest with you when I wasn't reading the journal all I was thinking about was this girl I was just thinking about this girl I was thinking about um what happened I was over analyzing you know being self-critical thinking about like why did I do that why did I say that like um what can I do to fix it um how can I go about it like what can I do when I get back what am I gonna say to her should I text her should I wait should I just text her when I get back like I think I'm just gonna wait till I get back like I was so in my head trying to plan everything out so that I could make things go the way that I want them to go like I I, I was putting out a plan of what I'm gonna do to make things go my way essentially and that's it upset me that the entire two first cups all I could think about was her because this happened to me when I went to New York for the Britney show I realized I liked this girl literally right before I went to the Britney show and then she was all I could think about and it's like I have an issue where when I like someone they consume my brain and I don't like that and so I I love having a crush because it's so much fun but then I hate having a crush because I get so consumed by this crush and it's like it's like all I want and that's why I'm working on the clinginess and the limerence because I'm like I don't want to do that I don't want to be that person I want to be me and have someone by my side who I can still do my own thing and they can do their own thing and me not feel insecure about that and me not feel left out and not want to be like attached at the hip all the time I don't want to be that person I I enjoy being around a person a lot but I also get sick of them very quickly if I'm around them too much so it's like a problem where I'm like oh my god I want to be around this person it's like intoxicating and I want to make this person be my partner and then once I have them I'm like eh, it's okay okay next like that and that's a problem so I've that's why I've stayed single for this amount of time because I don't want and and I and because I've been working on that not not just getting with anybody you know finding the right person kind of thing especially in this journey with like liking girls like I want to make sure it's you know a good the right person because I already hooked up with like not the right person last year <laughs> it was not a good experience so I'm being patient because I didn't listen last time. I didn't listen last time. I knew that I wasn't supposed to do that and I did it anyway. And I, you know, paid the consequences because it was not good. And um, I got a yeast infection for three weeks. It was literally the worst yeast infection of my life. It was not a good, a good hookup. So this time I'm like, okay, I'm not just going to go with what, what she wants. I got to think up here. Okay. Because she be fucking me over. Okay. So that's why I've been more careful this time around so um I was upset with myself for the fact that I couldn't get her out of my head but I then I kept thinking Alex everything happens exactly how it's supposed to happen if you met her right before you came to this trip and she said this right before this journey there was a reason there is a reason that I went through what I just went through like in the last let's say 30 days or obviously the last two years but at least the last 30 days that led me here and we need to work on that and the fact that I even said I have a problem with clinginess and limerence on a first date like I don't know where that came from it was already the medicine working in me the fact that she called are, are you needy like I was so triggered but it's because I was acting needy that's so annoying that is so annoying. Like, if somebody did that shit to me, I would I would be a bitch about it. I'd be like, get off my dick, bro. And the way that I'd be cutting people off like nothing, I'm surprised 
I'm surprised she didn't approach it in a different way. She could have maybe worded it a little different. Like, hey, um, uh, first of all, I'm busy. Second of all, I don't have to like, you know, text you every day. I don't want to feel that pressure to feel like I have to text you um, because we're not in a relationship. And I also don't want a relationship. She could have worded it that way. But she just said, um, just a question, are you needy? And she may, from her standpoint, it may not have come across as like a rude or offensive type of way. But I took it as you're calling me needy. Like you could say, paint it any way you want. You just called me needy. Like that's rude. But I was acting needy. So she said it the way she had to say it for me to feel it. If she would have sugarcoated it and said it maybe a different way, maybe it wouldn't hit me as hard. And I'd be like, what? Me? <laughs> no, girly pop. Or even then I would have like, if it was any other time and she said, are you needy? I'd be like, oh my God, no. Like I'm, I'm being extra girl. Made a joke about it. But because of everything going on, it was meant to hit me hard. It was meant to hit me the way it hit me. It was meant to make me feel like ugh, these like feelings that came up of my shadow self. And I was like, damn, I don't want to fucking just think about this girl this entire journey. But it was like, okay, but let's look at what we're doing. I'm trying to control what's going on. I'm trying to map everything out, which is what I do, which she said, like, not everything has to be planned out. Like, just go with the flow. And I told her, okay, listen, I realize that this is something I need to reflect on. I'm going to take this weekend to reflect on that. I think this weekend is going to help me with that. I appreciate, you know, the fact that we're able to communicate with this. Um, because yeah like i shouldn't have done that i shouldn't have i shouldn't have said that so i'm going to take some time to process this and and so that's i knew that that was the medicine already working in me and that's what i did so during that time i was like damn like is this really what i'm going to be thinking about during my journey is this girl like girl get out of your head like think about something else but i knew <clears throat> That it was happening because the medicine was trying to show me this is what you do you only you obsess and you make this person like the center of the universe essentially and then you forget about yourself you will i literally heard you will bring the moon and the stars down for somebody else but you won't do it for yourself do it for you it was like i love myself but like I tend to give so much of myself to other people. Like I will give you the world if I care about you. I will do anything for you. And I need to do that for myself. And so the medicine was showing me, <clears throat> look at you. You're thinking about this girl and you're trying to plan out the next move. What are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? Instead of being here now, all I could think about was the future. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So then third cup comes around and I'm like, haven't purged haven't cried nothing just in my head thinking over analyzing third cup comes around and i'm like oh man i mean i kind of want a third cup but like i don't want to get up i was so tired and and i start having conversation with myself and i'm like do i want a third cup yeah i mean you're already here like push yourself like what are you gonna do? not do it you're already here you flew here you might as well take third cup i know but i just like i don't want to get up i'm so tired and so i just laid I just laid staring and the shaman Tefa comes over. Are you ready for your third cup? And I was like, bitch, you heard me. I literally just said it in my head. Okay, let's go. So I got up. I was just like, oh my God, this is too funny. I literally just said it in my head. So she came over to me and said, let's go for your third cup. So I take third cup. Now I started off first cup being scared, like shaking in my boots, like, little by little she gives me third cup a full cup and i'm like smiling while she gives it to me okay she gives me third cup i go sit back on my mat and i just smile and i hear there it is that's the smile we wanted to see and it was like like the thing about the girl just like left my head and it was like i was so happy I was so happy and I was I was I'll say I was very attracted to the fires that were around there were torches with fire I was watching the fire dance I could see um images of like people in the fires like I'd be like manipulating the fire like I'd be like 
you know, there would be two flames and I'm like, turn into one and then they'd become one and then they'd be two like dancing. And it was like, I could see like spirits dancing in the fire. And it was so fucking cool. I was so attracted to the fire during the ceremony. So I'm really interested to see what that means. What that, like, why was I so into the fire in the ceremony? Um, I remember seeing a lot of cat eyes, cat eyes and, um, and snake eyes and you guys saw the clip where I was like oh my god that's what I saw in my vision that's what I'm talking about I legitimately saw a ton of cat and snake like eyes um like that so I was like that's so interesting now I also did not want to see anything dark I was like, I don't want to see anything dark because I started getting a little bit of dark images showing up. And I was like, no, let's think about happy things. I don't want to. And that's a thing with me where I'm like, I just don't want to look at the darkness because like I've already seen the dark. I've experienced the dark. I don't want to anymore. I want to be in the light. I only want to be in the light. I know it's all about duality and it's not really scary. It's really not. Um, so that's something that I need to work on. And maybe, you know, if I do another ceremony. I'll get thrown into the darkness just to get over that, you know? But this time she was so gentle with me. She was so, so gentle with me. And um, I also had an intention of wanting to... Sorry, my throat hurts when I swallow. Um, I had an intention of wanting to see my galactic family or any interdimensional beings... So there was a point where um, Vegas came to my head. I started seeing Vegas. And I was like, Vegas? And I saw the Pyramid Hotel in Vegas. And I was like, okay. And then it took me to Vega, the North Star, which is our northern star, which is when the Georgia Guidestones, um, I'm pretty sure when the Georgia Guidestones were around, I think they were pointed at Vega, the North Star, or um, what is it called? Um, at the Hoover Dam. They had everything laid out, like, with the Freemasonry and stuff. And it was, like, Vega was the North Star. I made a video about it. Vega is the North Star. Our Northern Star. So, I was like, oh. And then I saw a big, gray-headed alien. A big... She had, like, a dome like this. But, like, okay, this is, like, not as big as um, I saw it. It was a huge, 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 very, very wide very very wide gray headed alien from vega from the northern star of vega she had a huge dome and it was like her head was just like i don't know how to explain it it's like she had like her dome was just like oh my god I, it was like this like like it had like this it was like dimensional like not just like a regular alien head it was like so 3d kind of thing and i don't know i started seeing spaceship i saw i saw a lot of different types of spaceships and so i asked like oh are you guys the ones with me right now from vega and they're like yes and i was like okay cool 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 so that was really cool i was really happy about that i started seeing my dog oliver who passed away um you know i saw like my sister um my ex who's like now my bestie ryan um you know him and his dog i saw my my other bestie um mallory like i just saw them and it, they just brought me so much joy and happiness i could not stop laughing i could not stop talking next time i do a ceremony i want to bring a tape recorder because i can't have my phone and i want to record my thoughts because i can't write them down and i have so many thoughts that come in and i would have been able to tell you guys so much more things because i forgot what i was talking about i was just rambling and i was like Brr non-stop rambling with thoughts and i'm cracking myself up then i saw myself like in egypt which again i saw the pyramid i saw egypt my first journey i saw egypt i saw um like pharaohs i was seeing pharaohs and i saw myself being like i don't know if i was a pharaoh or if i was like a an egyptian goddess something like that i saw and i saw wow people used to worship the ground i walked on i saw that i was like people used to worship the ground i walked on and i'm over here crying over this shit girl get your shit together i started laughing at myself what the fuck is wrong with you you dumbass like not to call myself a dumbass but it really was just like girl what is wrong with you there's absolutely no reason for you to be acting this way um get your shit together like i was cracking myself up i was having so many conversations with myself i was like honestly me and my 500 personalities 
I don't need anybody else. I have so many fucking personalities in here. I was cracking up and I was like, literally, I'm so freaking funny. I am so freaking entertaining. Like, honestly, everybody's boring. I'm the only funny one here. I'm literally the only funny one here. Like, I was so in like i was just cracking up i was literally cracking up with myself because i was like why was i stressing why was i stressing that was so stupid so <coughs> <coughs> i'm like looking through my notes because i did write some of the stuff that i remembered the next day um let's see if i can if i if i'm forgetting anything um so at that point, I was like, it was like, okay, now that you're in a good mood, now that you're happy, now that you've relaxed, let's think about why you acted that way. Why'd you act that way? Why did you get that way? Um, what, where did that come from? And it was like, oh, that was my inner child. That was my inner child um, being afraid, having fear of abandonment, of not being seen, not being heard, not being loved, not being cared for. Um and for me it's like i need someone to say that they want to be in a relationship with me or be in a relationship with me as a sense of security and stability but in the grand scheme of things nothing is secure or stable ever there are no certainties in life nothing is ever guaranteed you can get with someone they can die they can cheat on you they can leave you it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and i always say nothing lasts forever because we are ever evolving we are ever transmuting we are we are always just going to keep going and i and i know that and so i was like what am i doing like why did i sit here and make i make a big deal every time i push people into doing things for me that i want but i don't even know if it's exactly what i want like i'm trying to I'm getting upset over this girl saying she doesn't want a relationship, but do I want a relationship? Now, maybe, yes, maybe I do. Because the first time I was upset that, you know, um, when I was upset and I wasn't talking to her, I was like, why am I so upset? Maybe I do want a relationship. But I also do enjoy being single as well. And I, I just think that like, when you've been in like long-term relationships, you know how consuming they can be. So when you're single and you're doing your own thing, it's nice to like not have to answer to anybody. But I think that her and I fell into a little like habit of like act, kind of acting as if we were relationship e with like the texting and stuff. And then with that, it was like she realized like, wait, I'm like doing too much because she's getting attached and she's getting used to it and I'm not her girlfriend. So maybe I should stop acting that way maybe you know I'm, I'm guessing this is just me assuming what's going on in her head i don't know i didn't ask her um but that's what i'm gonna assume happened because yeah i did i was definitely acting as if when she wasn't you know um so then i was like oh that was my inner child that was just my inner child it was like what i used to seek in men um validation um yeah like it was all for validation it was to not feel alone it was to know that i have someone um and so when i started thinking about that then i had to purge so when you're thinking about something when you're under the medicine it will activate your purge if it's something you need to get rid of and i didn't want to throw up i was like oh i don't want to purge and i was like yeah but get it out that's just an insecurity and you need to let it out so I did and I purged like this was like a chill purge because I was literally laying on my side and I just put an elbow up and I was like wah like on the bucket. It was like pretty chill. It was like three little purges like wah 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 that was it. Super chill like not from the depths of my soul type of purge which happened night two okay. So which happened ceremony one when I got shot to another dimension and I'm like glued to my fucking bucket those are like like it moves you it's like you're literally letting out so many demons so many monsters from inside you like all the trauma and so it like pulls you and you feel it and there could be like entities inside you that want to hold on to you and you're like get out and so they're like fighting back while you like this is what happened to me on dmt when i was doing um 5meo um 
Bufo. Uh, I, I didn't see any images. I didn't just like pass out and go somewhere else. I purged and I could feel there was an entity pulling. Okay, sorry guys, I got a little, uh, I, my, my alarm went off because I got a, had a check in for my flight and I got a window seat. Woo -woo. Okay, so during Bufo, I felt an entity pulling down at me and I was like, get out. So that's what you kind of feel at when you do these plant medicines, it'll be like pulling down and you're like trying to get it out. And so it'll be like legit, like you're like letting go of all this shit. And remember, you're not doing this just for you and your lifetime. You're doing this for your lineage. So you're doing this for seven generations that were before you and you're healing the seven generations after you. OK, so this is huge when you do this kind of thing. So, um, this purge though was like really mild. It was like, oh, just let go of that little bit of insecurities. It's like a little bit that was still in there. I'm like, okay. So I purged that and literally like the, the rest of the night, I was just cracking up, up, cracking the fuck up. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. I will tell you something. This is going to be a little TMI. Sorry, men. So you guys know I was on my period, on my period uh, during ceremony, which is I got it last time too. We love that for me. And um, I told her, the shaman, and she was like, you should not wear a tampon. Tampons are not good for you. I know everybody says that. I was like, I know, but like, that's all I have. And then she provided adult diapers because sometimes you pee yourself. Sometimes you poop yourself. You can have accidents because the medicine will just run right through you. So I... um she was like why don't you just not wear a tampon and just wear a diaper and i'm like uh, what i don't want to wear a freaking diaper but i do know how bad the medicine can be to the point where it like literally the poop can just literally come out of you like because it just comes out like water like you have no control over your body and it's totally normal for that to happen so i was like well you know what I don't know if that's going to happen because if it didn't happen like my first time, which is like the worst time ever, or even the second time I kept getting up to go to the bathroom, I didn't think it was going to happen this time. But since I was on my period and I knew that I was going to have time to change my tampon during ceremony, I was like, I'll put one on in case I bleed through my tampon because I probably will because it was my heavy day. So I did put a diaper on and... I did bleed through my tampon. So around midnight, I am like, yeah, I'm definitely bleeding through my tampon. And I was like, honestly, at this point, I could just take the tampon out. Why did I not get up and go to the bathroom to do it? I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But I decided to do it right then and there in the mat. Um, under the covers. I have napkins next to me. And I was like, well, I could just take it out and wrap it up in this napkin. So I grab a napkin. I go under the covers. I cannot find the tampon string. So I literally just stick my hand up in there in the blood. Because mm -hmm. I'm under the medicine. So I like don't care. I stick it in there. I find it. I take it out. Wrap it underneath the blanket like with the paper towel. Throw it in the trash. And I'm like, oh my God. Who am I? My hand's like bloody. I'm like, okay. Then I get up to go wash my hands. I could have just done that in the bathroom there's a porta potty right next to the hand washing sink why did i decide to do that on the mat i don't know but i'm sure there's a reason because again i did pull it out with my left hand which is a feminine energy that i'm connecting to my blood my womb i was like all all of that is significant okay these don't happen by chance so i was like <laughs> okay um so i did that and i just thought i was hilarious i am crazy i kept saying i'm so crazy oh my god i'm so funny if people only knew if people only knew i was cracking myself up you guys like i just thought i was like the fucking funniest thing and honestly i am that to be honest because afterwards like when we were sharing i told everybody like my story i was like i was cracking up myself up i was talking to myself i was like anybody sees me they're gonna think i'm a friend but i was having a blast with myself I was laughing. I was like, I'm so funny and everybody else is so boring. And they were like cracking up. They literally, everybody was like, you're the most funniest fucking person ever. And I'm like, oh, I love that for me. It's like, I started off my content doing my serving skits, which is very funny stuff. And then I got into more serious stuff. 
and I feel like I've lost a little bit of my comedic side and I'm ready to bring that back and I feel like definitely this journey did bring a little bit of that personality back and I was like god I have like an amazing personality and then the crazy the funniest thing is that my roomie was like I just have to tell you that you have the ber the best personality first of all you remind me of one of my best friends Suzanne who died of a drug overdose but you remind me so much of her she was just like you she was such an extrovert eccentric um just so funny like full of life and you kind of look like her and i was like oh look at suzanne visiting you through me and she was like cracking up and then i started telling her how i thought i was straight and then i liked girls and she's like that happened to suzanne she literally was straight and then she liked girls and then she was in a long-term relationship with a girl and i was like am i suzanne um and she was like i, I you know how like sometimes you, people be like oh my god this girl like has such a big personality and like is so extra and they suck no you literally have like such a big personality you're so extra but like you're literally the best like you're so funny i love that you were at my roommate you had me cracking up i thank you so much for sharing your stories like she loved me and i was like oh my god thank you like that is so freaking sweet oh the lighting is way better over here i'm like that is so freaking sweet so that was really nice and everyone was like you've had us cracking up all weekend because i went into it crying and then the whole time i'm like ah, i'm the best i'm actually amazing everybody i actually remembered who the fuck i was literally like tefa was like how are you feeling i'm like great not a single tear was shed bitch because i remember who the fuck i am i was literally like bitch you're an alchemist my hands were so hot because my hands are portals and they get very very hot when i'm alchemizing energy and transmuting energy which is what i was doing this weekend and so i'm like girl i'm literally an alchemist i'm a magician i'm a witch i'm a goddess i'm whatever the fuck you want to call it but i'm powerful remember how powerful you are what are you doing crying over these little insecurities girl what the fuck is wrong with you you are a queen anybody would be lucky to be with you anybody would be lucky to share the energy with you they share space with you and you're sitting here putting yourself below people don't put people up on a pedestal put yourself on a pedestal you will want to do so many things for other people you want to bring down the star and the moon for somebody do it for you do it for you and i was just like oh my god like it was like this epiphany that i had like i already knew this stuff but it was like it just like really solidified it under the medicine um let me see if there's anything else that I that I wrote down. Oh, yeah. So, uh, thank God I did write it down. I did, I did. So, when I got up to wash my hands after I pulled the camp on, I, um, there is a big tree, which you guys saw. There's a big tree, and I just felt so drawn to hug it. And I just hugged the tree and it just felt so comforting. And I was just like laying and I was like, I want to be inside you. I know that I used to be a tree in a past life. I just know I've always been connected to trees ever since I was a kid. And I always got really mad when trees would get cut down for fucking buildings. I would get so mad. I just love the trees. And I'm like, oh, and so I just hug the tree and i said please give me your strength give me your wisdom give me your knowledge give me your history give me your your stoicness your sturdiness your like literally like i just wanted i wanted everything that the tree had like i wanted to be as strong and as sturdy as the tree like i wanted to stand firm because <coughs> trees they don't move around looking for nutrition they don't move around looking for animals to hang out with they don't do anything the tree stays firm and everything comes to the tree and that's how i want to be i want to stand firm and people come to me i want to i do not chase i attract and i'm always chasing people i'm always chasing after people stop doing that stand firm stand firm and let them come to you so that was something that I had to learn. And I just felt so, so comforted by the tree. It just gave me a big hug. It was like a big, I could feel it was very much feminine energy tree. I loved it. Um, I was journaling and the birds were chirping really, really loud as I was um, journaling and the crows were crowing earlier. But this, um, I wrote this night two of what I remembered in night one so that I could make sure that... Um, so that I could make sure that I remembered. 
um and then you guys saw that i pulled that caterpillar card which is like with all the eyes and it was about change and then i pulled the number 55 which is the father gate card which means take a bold step so like it talked about how like more gifts are going to be opened up but you have to like take the bold step to keep moving forward don't get stuck don't stay stagnant um and i, I that was all you know the next day um uh let's see let's see if i'm missing anything oh and um that the card said something about time like about right timing which i found interesting because you know i'm always obsessed with time and i always say that like time is an illusion oh and of course i had my watch with me you guys know i always have to bring my watch with me to know the timing of everything so though i didn't write it write it down the first night i was like keeping track of like when did we take our first cup how long did it take to hit so the medicine takes like 30 to 45 minutes to hit and then like when did we take second cup how did that go so you know me i got issues i got issues uh because why am i obsessed with having that um I always say I have an issue with time, but time is an illusion, which is why I need to stop thinking that I'm wasting time because no time is ever wasted. I am always exactly where I'm supposed to be. So that is something that it showed me. It showed me that when I said to her, well, what am I doing? I'm wasting my time. You're not wasting your time. You're not wasting your time. There is no time to be wasted. Time isn't real. You are just living the experience you're living the human experience and there's absolutely no reason for you to think that you're wasting something and it was just like it gave me clarity on like girl like and now i don't know if if um this happened to me day one or day two but it was like it gave me clarity on like girl um why are you stressing literally my birth chart says that i'm not going to be with one person forever that i'm i will be constantly changing partners because that is it's just how i'm supposed to be i'm gonna have a person that's not gonna work out i'm gonna have another person and it's kind of scary to think about like what do you mean like i'm not gonna be with one person forever like it's scary to think about like getting my heart broken so many times but it's also like fun to think about the fact that i get to experience new people and have new journeys with different people like that is so much fun and i love the honeymoon stage of a relationship i love the talking stage i love the getting to know each other and this is exactly what essentially this girl and I were doing was just like talking, getting to know each other. And for a minute, like we wanted, she wants to prolong it. And I'm over here wanting to rush it. Why? Why am I trying to rush it? Neither of us want to get married or have kids. What's the rush? She's not like she even wanted to date anybody. Like we literally met and she was like, oh, I was just looking for friends. But then we liked each other. So now here we are. But we weren't looking for anything. So what, what is my deal? It's a control thing. I realized it's a control thing. I want to be able to control what happens. And if somebody tells me I don't want that, I'm going to make you want it. Why? Girl, calm down. What the fuck's wrong with you? So I was like, I, why are you doing this? Because like you don't even know if you want a relationship with this girl or if you want a relationship at all. I Yes, I enjoy having a relationship because I enjoy having a person but i can have that without a relationship as long as we come to a mutual understanding of like how we're going to be respectful of each other and our boundaries but there doesn't have to be a label on anything and so when i realized like i was being so extra for nothing just for a label that is the conditioning that i have to get rid of i have to get rid of this conditioning and thinking that there's only one way and this is how it has to be and this has to happen if this is going to happen like we have to be in a relationship if we're going to hook up or something. It's like, we don't have to. What if we what if we get in a relationship and then we hook up and it sucks? What if we hook up and it sucks and I don't want a relationship? Like, I have to stop thinking things have to be in a certain order, in a certain way, because it doesn't have to go that way. I can just be present, go with the flow, chill, relax. So that really showed me that night one. And even more night two as well. But night one i was like oh i was really dumb to act that way but i get it it was my shadow self old shit coming up that i needed to see i needed to see that that was an insecurity that came up and that um i have anxious anxious attachment style and that comes from my mom my mom has very much an anxious attachment style and i don't need to carry that i don't need to carry that on 
to the next thing, to the next person. I don't need to project that to the next person. I don't need to put that pressure on anybody. And so that really, um, that really shifted my mindset. Um, we ended a ceremony around three o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, we got some soup and, and I was like, mm, I was like, always, I'm always the first one. <laughs> they were like, the food's ready. And I was like, you don't got to tell me twice. Taurus on the way. Get over there. And then I'm like, oh my God, I take one bite. Oh my God, this is so good. Who made the soup? It was like a potato lentil veggie soup. Who made the soup? Who made the soup? And they're like, oh, she did. I was like, oh, props to the chef. And everybody's like cracking up. I'm like, oh, I'm hilarious, honestly. Um, I was really like the lighthearted one considering how I went into it. It was just like a whole transformation. So we didn't get our phones back because they don't give them back to you till morning. They don't want you calling anyone, doing anything crazy under the medicine. And thank God they didn't give it to us night one because, you know, I would have been in my fields and maybe I would have done something. So whatever. Now we go on to night two. So we go on to night two and I'm definitely feeling better. I definitely asked to go deeper. I said, take me somewhere deeper and please give me clarity on on like work stuff. Like what am I supposed to be doing work-wise? Cause I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Um, so those were my two intentions for night two. So now here I have timestamps and I'm gonna go ahead and just read them to you. So night two, we take our first cup at seven. I take my first cup because you know, whatever. Well, everybody took the first cup around 7 p.m. Very full cup, like gulps, like gulp, 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 like four gulps. I'm like, ooh, that's a lot. Okay, 7.45. I get a body high. It starts hitting. 8 p.m. Um, I went to the bathroom and I had to change my diaper because I was free bleeding and I had had it on since like four. And I was like, okay, that's enough. Time to change it. 8.25. Second cup. Again, very full. Gag. So she gives me the cup and I'm like, I drink it. And even though I have my no nose plug and everything, it's like, mm. it comes up like right away. I'm like, I kept it down. I kept it down. I kept it down straight to my mat get my mouthwash get my altoid take a breath now second cup i did not want to get up for not because i didn't want to drink it but because i could already feel like i had to purge and i was like if i take second cup i'm definitely gonna purge mm -hmm. and i don't want to but i knew i had to so i kind of chilled on my mat and she comes over to me and she's like, you ready for your second cup? And I was like, oh, it's going to make me purge. And she's like, yeah, but it's going to be good. And I'm like, okay. So I go up there <clears throat> and I take second cup. At 8.35, 10 minutes after my second cup, they start chanting this song that I had heard at church before. And it's, amor, 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 ama tu... And you can say whatever. Como te mismo. Okay, like that. So I, that triggered, I was like, that's a church song. Which is, um in, in English, it's love, 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 blank. Just um like yourself. Like that. So they said, amor, 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 amor. Ama tu madre como a ti mismo. I don't remember that. But I've heard this song at church before. And at church they would say, Ama tu prójimo como a ti mismo, which is like love your neighbor just like yourself. But then I think they would say, Dios es amor, which is God is love. But here they were saying that is love. So I was like, oh my God, how interesting that they would be singing this song that reminds me of a church song. <clears throat> 910. Feeling sober as fuck. So 7 p.m. first cup, 8.25, second cup, 9.10, sober. I'm like, wow, I am. And that's when I start journaling because I'm like, I'm sober. Uh, 9.10, everyone else is purging and crying. Me, chilling and laughing about it. Not that everybody was, no, I wasn't laughing at everybody purging. I was laughing at myself that I'm just chilling. Um, oh my God, I've come such a long way. Go me. Okay, so... At 9.15, I journal this. I'm going to read it because I don't think I wrote anything like too private. Uh, what's private anymore? Because I've literally shared everything. So I said, okay, it's about 9.15. And I feel sober after processing the first two cups. I thought I was going to purge, but nothing came out. 
Um, I will say I'm a bit sleepy slash loopy. So not 100% sober, but pretty chill as fuck. I have come such a long way. I'm proof that I'm doing all the, that I am proof that doing all the internal work works. And you don't have to keep coming back to do these if you don't want to, the ceremonies. But Aya wanted me to come back one more time. And I underlined it and put Britney because Britney Spears is always with me. Aya wanted me to come back one more time, baby, one more time, to show me that she can be gentle too. The first two were rough. And I needed that. So the first two journeys were with Faisal Pedro, the guy, and they're definitely rougher. He definitely like, bah. like ayahuasca can be very rough. It's very rough. But this one was such a different feminine energy and it was so soft. It was so gentle. And I was like, okay, so there's polarity. There's duality. I don't have to be rough all the time. I could be soft, just like the medicine. Just like the, the chick who came in earlier and said, you know what my son told me? I, can, I can't hear you when you're being loud and yelling, but I can hear you when you talk to me softly. I don't have to be rough. I don't have to yell. I don't have to control. I don't have to do all that. I could just zen. So that was so cool. She wanted to show me that she could be soft too. You have to go through the darkness to get, through the, to, get to the light. The only way out is through. And I did it. That's not to say that the journey is over. The journey never ends. We are everlasting beings. Consciousness will never cease to exist. It just transmutes. My hands have been hot during the ceremony because I am an alchemist and my hands are portals. So, um, oh, I gotta read my handwriting. So, so I don't know what this says. So, oh, so the fact that yesterday I pulled my tampon out and was all up in my veg <laughs> um, and all is a huge sign that I'm using the power of the womb to alchemize. I have to say it feels so good to be on the other side. I love the progress I've made. I am so proud of myself. I am a freaking icon. Paris in parentheses. Paris Hilton, you know, she always says icon. So they both came to my head. I am a freaking icon, a legend, if I'm being honest. Uh, you know what I noticed between this ceremony and the mushroom one, which I did a mushroom ceremony back in November with Emily, um, where I journaled for four hours straight, is that under the medicine, my hands do not hurt from writing. Like literally, when I journal normally, the, it hurts. But when I journal under the medicine, it just flows. And then I said, my hands, I said, my hands don't hurt from writing. And then I said, girl, you only use one hand to write. I don't know why you said hands as in pearl, but go off, I guess. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I have to be an alien because why am I just like chilling? Uh, why am I just chilling right now after two days of Aya? Am I okay? Um, I mean, I'm grateful that it's been chill, but I just wish there was more. But you know what? She knows she shows you exactly what you need to see and something that i've noticed with this journey is that i'm not so distracted or concerned with anyone else's trip the first two trips was so overstimulating now i will say that this trip was quieter there was no men thank the lord but it was just quieter and yeah women were having their freak outs women were screaming throwing up whatever the case may be but um I wasn't concerned. I wasn't concerned with like, I was in my own corner, in my own world, living my own life, not giving a fuck about anybody else's journey, which is such a big difference from two years ago. Two years ago, I was so distracted. And this time I was in my own world. And I was like, oh my God, I love that for me. Like, I literally didn't care. I was like, I don't care that people are purging. I mean, I do, but I don't. I'm in my own world, not concerned about others' journeys. And I love that for me. That's also how I need to be in life just chill and vibe don't worry about it i said don't worry about it girly pop um that's exactly what this girl that i was talking to is trying to show you there is no reason to stress rush or pressure anyone into anything just let it flow let things be let the universe and god show you how much they love you you are not alone in this journey and everything is going exactly how it's supposed to don't forget that you <clears throat> wrote the story 
and this is just the beginning you still have so much more coming you are always in your head trying to figure out the next move chill relax you got this allow space for new opportunities to show up and present themselves to you don't lose don't close yourself off there's still so much more you haven't experienced allow yourself to flow like water remember you came from the ocean that's why you were seeing sirens earlier oh i forgot to tell you guys i saw like sirens like mermaids in my head at one point so that's why they told me that like you were seeing sirens earlier because we wanted to remind you you're from the ocean flow with the water the water it just flows it's got no beginning or end it's infinite it just go it just goes and it can transmute it can become solid it can become gas that's how we are we just flow and we just transform and transmute I said you were seeing and I when I journal sometimes I start to channel and this is like this was me channeling so I'm speaking to myself in like what is that second person you because that's how I was coming through like my higher self you were one of them um she is still inside you be free like a mermaid who remember that be free like a mermaid who swims the ocean blue fly free like a bird you are no longer caged so why do you insist on caging yourself? That was like, pfft. you are no longer caged. So why do you insist on caging yourself? And that's what I've been doing. It's like, I want to be tied down, but I don't want to be tied down. No, I don't. I, don't, I need space. I don't want to feel suffocated. But then I'm like, but I want to tie people down. It was like a mess of shit. It's like, I want this. Wait, wait. Like I'm being pulled from every direction. You're no longer caged. So why do you want to cage yourself? because it is familiar it's okay to do something you haven't done before change is good do what do what you want wait oh no change is good don't you want to meet different versions of yourself here's your chance let go of control and allow yourself to meet more versions of you there's nothing to fear you are already on the other side so why do you still fear you know how powerful you are. You know how magical you are. You know you are a queen. You know you are an alchemist. You know you are a witch. You are an angel. You are an alien. You are everything. Everything is inside you. You are the universe experiencing itself, bitch. Relax and have some fun. You deserve it. You earned this. That's what I wrote to myself. That's what I wrote to myself. And I love that for me. I love that I wrote that. That was what I was going through. So then, that was at 9.15, 9.35, third cup. Gag again. Sometime between 9.35 and 9.50, I am laying down on my mat. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I have another roomie and her name is Lucy. And she's like, hey, come here. And I was like, what? And she's like, I've been following you for a while. I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, that's how I found ayahuasca. So she was a follower of mine and she saw my video of my first ayahuasca journey. And that's how she came to ayahuasca. And she lived in Florida. So then she had re I think she had like reached out to the shaman. And then he was like, oh, this is the one who does it in Florida. Found Tefa, has been working with Tefa, doing it, facilitating. She was literally a facilitator. A facilitator is like a volunteer. And she's like essentially training under her. And now she's going in her ayahuasca like journey. And because of me and not only her, another one of the facilitators, Lydia, found Tefa because of me. Because she saw my video, reached out to Taita, to the shaman. He sent her here. Both of them, they were rooming together in my, in the same place, in the little cabin I'm in. They were rooming together. And they both found me. They both knew me and they found ayahuasca through me like that's crazy and this is not the only time that this has happened i've had so many people tell me i did ayahuasca because of you because of your video like how fucking awesome is that like just from me sharing my stories people go into ayahuasca and that's why i keep sharing the stories and i'm super transparent about it because i don't want people to be scared even though they were scary the first two times look it can also be different it doesn't have to be that bad there's no guarantee that she's going to be soft with you because she's always going to show you what you need to see. But it's, I have to share these things because I am connected to the medicine 
And that's why Tefa reached out to me. Tefa didn't even know that the two girls that were volunteering for her that have been working with her for a while were because of me. And Tefa didn't even know. And then she got that calling to tell me to come back to do Aya. And she's like, okay, sure, I'll tell her. I don't know this girl. She's gonna think I'm crazy. No, when I went to get third cup, she heard, thank you for listening. And I said, and I told her before she had told, I said, can I ask you, why did you reach out to me? She tells me the story. And I said, she's like, I've never done that before. I didn't want to reach out. And I said, now, you know, you have to listen. When you hear the call, you have to reach out. She said, I heard that when I was giving you her, your third cup, I heard, thank you for listening. And I said, and I also listen. And I was like, look at that. So we're all connected. And it was just like, I've literally had people tell me, I have done ayahuasca because of you. And so I know that I'm here for a greater mission. I know that I'm helping heal the world through my work, through talking about this stuff. So sometime between 9.35 and 9.50, I get called to go sit next to Lucy. Lucy's the follower that, which by the way, when I was reading my journal the night before, one of my dreams, I was like, oh, I dreamt about Lucy in the sky with diamonds what which is lsd but it was literally like lucy in the sky with diamonds and i bring that journal read it here and then i meet lucy my follower who anyway you guys get it so i can't stop thinking about her and i'm like i need to go sit next to lucy i'm getting called to sit next to lucy so i find lucy she is sitting next to the fire and they're playing music with instruments and singing so i go over to her and i'm chill like i just journaled you go I go over there and I'm like, I was getting called to sit next to you. And she's like, okay. So I sit next to her. We're vibing, we're chilling. And I'm like, wow, I love this for me. I have not purged. Even though I thought I was going to have to after first come. I haven't purged. It's been great. I'm vibing. I'm chilling. Everything's wonderful. I love it. Super cool. Tefa, the shaman, is walking around. Um walking around you know singing like two and she comes over to me and she hands me a little egg and i was like what is this and she's going like this and i was like what it was a maraca a maraca remember that tiana told me you gotta go do ayahuasca and she told me about a maraca so what the fuck so she goes yeah i was like oh i was thinking like what does this mean rebirth and they start cracking up and then i start thinking what did come first the chicken or the egg what did come first, the chicken or the egg? So this is no more than two minutes that she hands me the egg. I sit here. Oh, does this mean rebirth? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Music stops. Music can activate you. So the music will activate, like it really will help you purge as well. Um, Cause it's like, it activates your shit and it can really help you expel some shit. So, so, um, <coughs> sitting by the music which normally i have to stay away from the music or sounds i wanted to be in silence and in my own head but i got called to go over there no i say that the music stops they sit in silence boom the medicine hits me the medicine hits me so fucking heavy so fucking heavy like i was like oh i like put my hand on lucy and i go it hit me and she was like oh and I crawl back to my mat and I'm like, oh, it's coming. I grab my bucket. Now, night one, remember, I'm laying down, chilling, one elbow, bleh, like that. On the on the on in on the mat, like in the trash can, like nothing. This time I was like, oh, oh, it's it's gonna be a big one. It's gonna be heavy. I am sitting in the mat with a bucket and I'm like, fuck. Fuck my stomach, my stomach, my stomach. Oh my god. I don't know if I have to take a shit or if I have to throw up. Oh my god. It was like it was like up and down, up and down. I was like, do I wanna poop? Do I have to throw up? Do I wanna poop? Do I have to I don't know? But I, if something is coming for sure, but I don't know. And I was like, okay, what do I wanna do? Well, do I wanna throw up or do I wanna poop? I mean I'd rather poop, but I don't wanna get up and walk, so I can't. I'm, I'm like way too under the medicine. So I'm gonna have to throw up. I'm probably gonna have to throw up. But I am glued to the bucket. I'm like Phew like a magnet like i'm heavy i'm so heavy it felt like my first ceremony where i couldn't move i was like in my bucket i'm like all of a sudden i was like yeah this is my mom's shit yeah my mom's shit my mom's shit's coming up 
yeah the minute i start thinking about my mom i purposely think about my mom because i just knew like this is my mom's shit that i have to throw up i just start purging 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 like it wasn't that bad it wasn't like first ceremony where i'm for like an hour straight it was like oh here it goes and i start purging and so the first night i purged like three little purges like one two three eh, nothing you know it's like if you throw up on shrooms or acid or something no not not that this one i said let's go deeper it went deeper it was like from the depths of my soul throw up and so it was like the like it's very deep like it's coming out from like in there like the core like really the core the solar plexus like it's from in there and so i'm like and i'm like throwing up and i'm just thinking like yeah i literally wrote um i purge all my mom shit fuck you bitch um with love from my ancestors that's what i wrote fuck you bitch with love from my ancestors sorry mom if you're watching this but not really um i'm healing my lineage and what the fuck about it bitch i love this for me that's what i wrote i'm healing my lineage and what the fuck about it bitch because it was like the church song coming on and um the insecurities that were coming up because of labels and you know societal standards and all this shit and the mess that i have in my head and the the voices in the back of my head and oh i i forgot to tell you guys leading up to this i my mom kept showing up in my dreams like every fucking night telling me you need to stop doing that you need to stop going out on friday nights and saturdays because that's the sabbath you need to you need to do this i had a dream where she came up and hugged me she was crying i miss you so much and i was just a silhouette of a person i was not there it was like i i was in the body but i wasn't in the body like i was just a silhouette where like i had not i had every time she kept showing up telling me what i was supposed to do i said i don't have to do that bye i would just leave where in the past i've had dreams where i'm fighting her she breaks up into pixels like she's not real like a matrix like I, as a kid growing up like in, into my adulthood i would have dreams where i was fighting her and she's like god you must hate me you're always dreaming about fighting me i didn't realize i was holding in so much anger towards her the anger was because of her but um but now i see her in my dreams and i'm like bye i give zero fucks in the astral whereas i used to care so much i used to wake up mad now i'm like laughing because even in my dreams she can't get to me where she would be able to before now i'm like gotta go bitch goodbye and so here it was like it felt good to purge that i'm like yeah let go of that control those insecurities that fear is all coming from her like the control because she's so controlling was that's what i was reflecting that's what I was doing with this girl was trying to control her like well I want this so you should want this no she doesn't have to do anything and I of all the people know that and so like that was something that was so clear at that moment when I was throwing up it was like let go of that control let go of the let go of the limitations let go of being caged let go of that shit and so I was like yeah I'm healing my lineage and what the fuck about it fuck you bitch this is an anniversary of two year, year no contract and i love that for me because i never thought i would be this place now and it's not and i said with love from my ancestors because it's not an anger thing i'm not angry anymore it's just your soul and my soul are on different missions and you are not gonna get it and i don't have to explain it to you i'm on my own mission you're on your own mission i'm okay with where i am I don't give a fuck about where you're at, what you're doing. And that was what I was letting go of. Like, yeah, let go of that last little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I haven't cried about my parents or felt bad about it in over a year. <coughs> I don't miss it because it was too much. Um, and if you guys have been here from the beginning, you know that and how far I've come. And I hope that you guys have watched my other videos and seen how far I've come. So that was amazing like that was such a good a good good feeling um is there more oh, okay so then after that it was like nothing happened i was like oh it, the, the medicine hit me boom really heavy purged it and then i was like okay back to normal like nothing happened so then i wrote i can't believe it's only 10 35 because remember i have my watch so i'm keeping track of everything and we're not supposed to be over to like 12 to 1 so i was like fuck dude i've drank three cups and i'm vibing now i can't believe it's only 10 35 the fuck i thought it was so much later but we freaking hammered those three cups right away um okay and we did it bitch we purged that final purge and i love that for me 
I am a fucking badass bitch. I love me. P.S. There is no destination. It is all a journey. Don't stop believing. Believe to receive, bitch. Because you guys know my merch says believe to receive. And that was the, the message. That, that's all I wrote. That's all she wrote. That was the message that I got was, hey, there's no final. There's no, fi there's no finish line. There's no finish line. There's no destination. You are just life experiencing itself you are just the universe experiencing life there is no reason for you to be in a rush there's no reason for you to try to figure everything out plan everything out map everything out control everything and control the narrative you want to see how amazing life can be give god and the universe the chance to show you and that's what i've been doing the last two years with taking the leap of faith and not working a regular job okay you say you got my back bet show me and they pull through every time every time and i always get amazing opportunities like this and I'm, I'm like trying to still like get a little bit of the light before the sun goes down it's six o'clock but there's like a gray cloud blocking so i'm trying to still have a, some light before i'm i wrap this up but it was like girl you love surprises i do love surprises and you you want to see how amazing life can be you want to see how amazing life can be let it be let it be let it be let it be if you want to see how amazing god the universe how much they got you and how how much they love you stop trying to control it sit back relax and let it happen just let it happen and after that i got called to stargaze and i was like i want to look at the stars I went and I laid out, out in a hammock and I just stared at the stars and I could see stars that you can't see with the naked eye. I I, I said, I wanna see, I wanna see some like alien activity, please. I wanna see some alien activity. I go sit down um, at the hammock and I'm staring up and it was gorgeous. Like being able to see the stars. God, I miss being able to see the stars. Like it was so beautiful. And I was like, God, I miss you. I wanna be in you. Like I miss the stars. I. I know I'm a star. I know we come from the stars. And I miss it. It's like my home. And so I just long to be out in the stars. And I was like reaching for the stars. And <laughs> reach for the stars. And um, I could see. So there would be like one bright star. And then there would be like little stars. Just like flashes. Just like. And I'm like. Am I seeing that right? Like that is the sign that I asked for. I was like I want to see some like alien activity. They started just flashing stars. Like. That you can't normally see. But because my frequency was higher because I was under the medicine, I could see things that you can't see with the naked eye. And so I was like, bro, this is fucking awesome. And I am laying in a hammock like everyone is like out there in their mats and the tents and everything. And I am all the way over here just like watching everybody. And I'm like, wow, what? Like life can be so fucking awesome and beautiful if you just let it. If you just let it, life can be so great if you just let it. And we get so consumed in the bullshit. And for what? To stress ourselves out? It's like you fix one problem so you find another one to stress over. Because you're bored. Because your body is used to being in constant flight or, fl flight or fight mode. In survival mode. What can we stress about now? What can we stress about now? Bitch, just chill the fuck out. Stop trying to stress about shit. Just go. Ride the wave. <coughs> like they said, you're from the ocean. I feel like I want to move closer to the to the window, but that's what it looks like. You see? Because I want I want better lighting. They're like, you're from the you're from the ocean. Ride the wave, bitch. Go with the flow. And that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm working on. So I laid out by the hammock and I stargazed and it was fucking beautiful. And um, I just felt so much love. I felt so much love. I was so grateful. I kept saying, thank you. Thank you, Aya. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you, guides. Thank you, angels. I could feel the angels. I felt the angel energy for sure. I was like, thank you, angels. Thank you, galactic family. Thank you, everybody for bringing me here. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. What an amazing opportunity this is to, to get here to the point of, of understanding. To the point of 
oh my god like i don't know how to explain it it's like it, and it happens so quickly how quickly your mindset and your perspective can change when you put in the work and when you do this kind of thing it's just such a beautiful beautiful thing i felt so much love i just wanted to hug all of the women I was whispering to them from the hammock being like, you're all so beautiful. I love you. I love you so much. And people were, were crying and I wanted to hug them, but you can't. And I was just like, don't cry. And I'm like, bitch, you were just crying. Shut the fuck up. I'm like, right. Okay. Let it out. Like I literally was just like, do you boo? But like, oh, it sucks when you see people crying and you're having a good trip. But like, that was me before everyone. And like, there was one of my other roomies. Cause we had like five girls in this place. What am I doing? was like, I want to have an experience. Like, you guys are having cool experiences. I'm like, that was me two years ago. I mean, I had a cool experience, but it was a rough one. But I was like, that was me two years ago. I want to have a pretty experience. I want to have a good experience. I want it to be light. I don't want it to be dark. I don't want to go through the shit. But you have to go through the darkness to get to the light. You need to experience the dark to get to the light. It's the only way you're going to know what light is. It's the only way you're going to know what duality is. It's the only way you're going to know. You have to experience the darkness to get to the light. So, um, I, my hands were super fucking hot. So I went inside and I asked for an ice, uh, ice pack and Tefa, the shaman was in there. She gave me an ice pack and I'm talking to her and that's where I ask her, can I ask like, what made you reach out to me? She's telling me. And I am like with the ice pack, with the ice pack, with the ice pack, we talked for maybe 10, 15 minutes. By the end of that, the ice pack had melted completely. It was warm. She was like, Oh my God. I was like, yeah, I told you I have alchemist hands. They're very hot. I'm transmuting a lot of energy right now. So she gives me like a huge ice pack, like a huge one that's like going to take hours to melt. So I go back to the mat with, or I go back to the hammock with that. I'm chilling with it. I put it at my feet. My, it was telling me, put it at your feet because my feet were also getting hot. And I was just chilling. It was super, super chill, super cool. Um, and I think that was pretty much it, you know, um, there's like somebody walking by there. She's going to be like, hey, girl. <laughs> that was pretty much it. And then at the end of it, um, at the end of it, they were like, I walked by and one of the girls is eating. And I was like, oh, lucky. And she was like, we're about to serve food. Just help yourself. So I went ahead and served my plate before everybody else. VIP. <laughs> uh, VIP. <laughs> always, always VIP. Access. VIP. Very important. Princess is really what it is. Like, I always get, like, first, <laughs> I always just get treated like a very important person. And I love that for me. I manifested that. I said, I want VIP experiences. And that's what I get. So, I got to eat first, thank the Lord, because they did end up running out of food a little bit. So, and I hadn't eaten, like, it feels like for a fucking week. I think I lost weight, to be quite honest with you. I feel like a skinny legend. I was literally laying in the hammock, and I was like, oh my God, I'm disappearing. A skinny queen. A, a literally tiny and that was something else that was like that was that I was working on as well because we're so self-critical and so judgmental and we put ourselves down and everything and it was like girl like you look good you know why because one of my roomies was putting herself down for gaining weight and she was like I feel disgusting she was putting herself down I said the more that you say that the more you're gonna see that in yourself you have to change your mindset she's like I know but I can't like and she does ayahuasca every two months so she's like I know but I for some reason I can't that's all she was focusing on was trying to shift her mindset but all she could see was like that she had gained all this weight and she was like I used to be so skinny I wish I could go back to me two years ago and I was like dude I always look back at my old pictures and be like damn I thought I was fat then like look at me now and it's like she's like I wish I could go back to my old self and tell myself these things and I'm like I'm gonna be honest with you I think you look great she showed me old pictures of her so like, girl you look better now you're voluptuous you got nice tits you got nice ass you look good bitch like nobody wants a little skinny little crack whore. like you look good and she was like oh my god I said you look younger now than you do then she's like really I'm like yes so for me let me see if y'all can see if we can see what I look like I feel like I look like a skinny little legend like okay okay tell me I don't look like a skinny little queen like I was like dude I don't feel at this is why people say they go vegan because I was like I don't feel like I look as bloated as before I definitely have I definitely haven't been bloated although I will sit today in a public sub eh, I did it even though I'm supposed to be gluten-free but it's like this is why people go vegan and eat so light because I definitely feel very much lighter I don't feel bloated my stomach feels flat these are literally the shorts that I came in and I'm like oh my god 
they fit me so different than they did just a few days ago. Like, I, you guys don't understand how much this medicine can change you in just a matter of a few days. And that's not just me. When we were done, everybody was different. Like we had, you know, cacao ceremony yesterday and we were going through and they were singing a song. They're like, say what's in your heart. Like, what do you feel in your heart? I feel love. I feel peace. I feel joy. I feel happiness. Whatever the case may be, say it. I said, I feel acceptance because I feel like I'm accepting myself more for who I am. And people are accepting me for who I am where I wasn't accepted before. I didn't feel accepted before, even by my own family, which is why we don't talk. So... It was so beautiful to have that and and then everybody said their thing and then when we when it was over i said if the song would have kept going and we would have went back around i would have said change i feel change in my heart and so we went ahead and did one more round of i feel change in my heart because i do feel different and i felt like the energy had completely shifted there was one lady who came in very makeup hair like very you know you could tell she cares a lot about her figure her outfits like she wanted to make sure she looked good all the time she had a very serious face she was like mm, like very bougie like i'm gonna be leaving on um when can was the earliest i can leave yeah that's when i'm gonna leave like whatever it's like okay she was very serious and she didn't speak um english and so or she didn't yeah she didn't speak english so she was talking in spanish so night two she started talking to me in Spanish, and so I had to talk to her in Spanish, which, oh, I forgot to mention that as well, um, was a little difficult for me because there were some words that I couldn't remember. Like, I was trying to tell her about my first experience, and I was like, I don't know how to say a bee inside of a honeycomb in Spanish. <coughs> because that, how often do you say a bee inside of a honeycomb in Spanish? I moved to Florida when I was six from Puerto Rico. Yes, I speak fluent Spanish, but there's some words that I don't use frequent enough to remember off the top of my head and and so it was like some words i had to like get a little bit of help and dirt under the medicine though i forgot to tell you guys this while i'm sitting at the hammock i just start talking in spanish all the words that come out are just in spanish and spanish and spanish and i'm having a full-on conversation with myself in spanish and that activated anytime i'm under medicine like when i get high i can speak spanish so much better than when i'm not and for some reason it just like it just started flowing and they were like you need to start making videos in spanish i have been putting that off because i don't feel comfortable enough speaking in spanish because i'm from puerto rico it's like spanglish it's not proper spanish like colombian spanish or everybody speaks different spanish and so it's harder for me i'm like oh i don't feel comfortable i don't know certain words i feel like it kind of takes me a minute the thoughts i think in english because I moved here when I was six, so it's easier for me, but it was flowing. And it was like, tienes que empezar a hacer videos en español porque vas a poder conectar con más gente. They said, you have to start making videos in Spanish because you're gonna start being able to connect with more people. Um, like, I'm gonna reach more people. See, even that, like, how do I say reach? Um, vas a poder, el mensaje le va a llegar a más gente. So it's like that, like, sometimes I have to like, think about how to say things. Under the medicine, it was like pff, flowing. And so I know this is something that they've been telling me. They want me to make videos in Spanish to reach more people. And people have asked me, can you please make a video in Spanish? It's just, it takes more time because I don't know how to say everything. But I have to, especially now that I'm not talking to my parents like I was be, oh, sorry, my low battery thing came on. Especially now because I'm not talking to my parents like I was before. I don't really practice my Spanish enough, even though I am in, essentially in Mexico, I'm in San Diego. And I talk in Spanish sometimes, but I'm not practicing it as much as I did when I lived back home. So that's something that I have to work on. And I did ask for to go deeper and we did with the mom thing. And then I said career thing and they said, start speaking in Spanish. Oh, the challenge, the challenge. So I'm saying it because they're telling, that's what they told me. Now I have to actually apply it. Now I will say after the ceremony was over, um, don't tell anybody, but I did sneak my phone back. I did. I stole it. Um, just because, like, I needed it to sleep. I hadn't slept in days, and I had so much fucking pain with everything going on. I like to listen to binaural beats to help me with the pain. So I stole the phone back so I could listen to binaural beats. So I did. Plus, at that point, I was, like, sober. I was, like, sober the whole night except for when I purged. So I was like, I'm not going to do anything stupid with my phone. I got my phone back. And during the ceremony um remember the first night i'm planning everything out oh when am i gonna text the girl am i gonna see her what am i gonna say blah 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 blah. 
during second night i heard like because i was gonna wait until i got back to san diego because it's like oh I, I let me give her space i don't want to you know let me do this let me do that all this stuff and i heard you don't have to wait you can text her whenever like it'll be fine so i did so the next day the next morning um now first i replied back to some of her stories she was out and we were fine she replied too so the next morning i text her and i say good morning I just want to say thank you for calling me out. Um, I wish I could remember exactly what I said. But I said, thank you for calling me out. Um, what happened? I was acting needy and it wasn't cool. And I don't know. I got triggered because I didn't know why I was acting like that. It had nothing to do with you and everything to do with me and my shit. Um, I appreciate that you spoke up. I needed to hear that. And um, I had an amazing trip, an amazing journey. I would love to tell you about it when I get back. If you're down, let me know when you're free. And again, I'm sorry for how I acted, but thank you for being you. And thank you for saying something. And she wrote back. Now, here's the thing. Normally, yeah, she may take the longest, maybe an hour to reply. Um, I texted her at 9 o'clock in the morning. I didn't hear back from her till 7.30 p.m so that that was a little test being like okay so are you okay now like are you gonna be chill or are you gonna be in your head about it and of course I, it's still like brand new like it just i just went through this experience so i am having a little bit of those thoughts coming in i'm like oh what if she doesn't want to talk to you anymore what if this what if that what if this what if that and i kept being like she'll text. she's not gonna ignore you she's gonna text you back when she's ready to text you back she's busy give her time even if she even if she decides she wants to take however long to text you back she has the prerogative to do that she does not owe you anything so i have to like literally talk myself through this so i was like okay and so even though i was checking my phone i was still like she'll text me when she's ready she'll text me when she's ready and then i had to do the wrap it happy wrap everything that was horrible because it was supposed to help clear my sinuses and all these issues but that was just very painful. But after that, um, you know, we were kind of dancing around and everybody was having fun at dancing, but I was still under that because that is also a medicine. And so I did cry a little bit and I was crying just like out of gratefulness. I was crying over, oh my God, like I, it, they, they had a song playing like Rise Up. And so I was just like, I felt like I had risen up and like it kept saying like, you are protected, you are guided. And like that made me so emotional to know like I am protected, I am so guided. Like they're always with me. My guides are always with me. They always got my back. And it was just like, it was just such an emotional moment. And they had us do an activity where we would go to each of the girls, look each other in the eye for at least five seconds and hug. Oh my god, we were all a bucket of tears. We were all a fucking bucket of tears. Like, we were a pool of tears, honestly. We would hold hands, look at each other. I would. There were some of them that I would just smile. Some of them I would just cry. It was, like, insane. And I was just, like, crying. I couldn't stop crying, hugging. I just felt so much love. Oh my god, I love you, I love you, I love you. Like, oh, it was so beautiful. And a lot of women are afraid to do all women retreats because they think women are catty and bitchy and this and that because that's what they've experienced because if that's all you've experienced that's all you know but honestly like you have to experience this type of thing to know that there is soft women there are loving women there are women who are motherly and caring and want to help you heal who love you and it was that's what i was thinking about like thank you for this community thank you for this opportunity to have be around these women who genuinely care and love one another and it was just beautiful it was beautiful i'm so 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 grateful to tefa um and every of every one of the facilitators all of the women that were here it was just it was amazing oh and the girl texted me back um after i said that and she was like oh my gosh like uh, you don't have to apologize for your feelings. Um, I'm sorry I said that. And I'm glad you had a great trip. I'm totally down to hear about it when you get back. I'll let you know when I'm free. And it's been fine. Now, I will say today we haven't really talked. I texted her back last night and I haven't heard from her today except she's like replied to my stories on Instagram. But I feel a change in me. I feel different. It's like it's like the the limerence, the infatuation, the obsession kind of like just kind of went away 
and it's not that i don't like her i don't know what's gonna happen when i see her the feelings may come back but right now i feel good i feel at peace and now i will say she's the first person i've talked to that i have not had anxiety with but the anxiety started creeping in right before ceremony and i think it's just because the medicine was like working in me in that sense and it had nothing to do with her she is a great communicator she is super chill super fun i love her vibe and that's why i liked her but at the end of the day like i i deserve to be with someone as equally as amazing as me and i'm not saying that she's not i'm just saying that i can't just be like oh i like this person for like these things and like that's it and then that's who i want to be with forever it's like there are more people out there there are more people out there there are um more experience more people to experience more adventures more journeys like stop trying to cage yourself in like that said like you're trying to cage yourself in when you don't have to like be free if she wants to hang out with you and you guys are going on dates and doing all these things but you're not a couple who cares you're having fun you wanted to date now you're dating and now you're mad that you're dating and you want something else that's my problem i always want to be at the finish line i'm like oh um i started gymnastics when i was little i wanted to be in the olympics i always want to skip ahead you guys know me i want to create a tesseract from point a to point c and skip over b but now it's like i literally i literally said i i just want to date i want to meet people i like i finally start dating and meeting people i like this girl and then i start sabotaging it i start sabotaging it because of insecurities and it's like girl calm down like what are you doing why are you acting this way so that was really eye-opening i'm so 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 grateful that she spoke up i appreciate that she spoke up it helped me see so i told her thank you for i know that you are a tool in helping me see what i wasn't seeing in myself so thank you she's just a reflection of me and she held a mirror to me she held a mirror to me and i needed that and i'm grateful and if nothing ever comes from nothing more comes from this friendship um and a relationship that we have formed <coughs> that is okay because i know that she came into my life for this purpose and she has told me that i'm also helping her speak up more and that she aspires to be like me as outspoken as i am and and not be like just saying yes to everyone and everything and so i'm helping her as well we're both helping each other <clears throat> i think that we're still gonna stay friends even if nothing happens and um and i'm grateful for that and it's just like i just have i just feel different i feel different and it's amazing how quickly the medicine works in you if you just let it be if you just let it work in you and um and go with the flow so i i'm now just gonna make sure that i stay centered stay grounded that's that was a lot of my journey was grounding that's why i had to hug the tree stay grounded and allow things to just flow and happen and that's that's what i'm gonna be doing and stepping into and let's see what else comes my way through this journey because you guys know how crazy the last two were and what happened in the last two years now let's see where this one takes me now i will say that this morning <clears throat> i woke up with a lot of pain and i was like it's time to go to urgent care okay i'm on day seven of this infection i know that i have an infection i did everything on my own to try to heal it and at this point i gotta go to modern medicine unfortunately but i will say that i had no fever no chills no nausea no other symptoms at all everybody thinks i'm completely fine except for the fact that i did lose my voice but it clearly is coming back now and um and my i feel my symptoms people don't see them but very very clogged i cannot hear from my ears if i hear the ocean inside my ears isn't that interesting um and my tonsils are very swollen and it hurts when i swallow so um uh everybody thinks i'm like totally fine oh you don't really have to go and i'm like listen i've done everything and i do have a higher pain tolerance because i am naturally a redhead even though i do dye my hair red i was actually born with red hair and gingers tend to have a higher tolerance for pain that's why they need more anesthesia that's probably why i need more plant medicine to really hit me because i have a high pain tolerance so i've dealt with this for seven days i had my period i went into anaphylactic shock and i did ayahuasca all at the same time and here the fuck i am i'm a fucking badass bitch i'm a fucking warrior i am a badass bitch and no one can do anything to me that i do not allow oh that's the other thing i took my power back 
I started going a lot. And I was like, I was like, I take back my power from everybody I've lent it to. And I was sucking all my power back. No one has any power of me. I take all my power back. And I was pulling it all back in. It was so fucking cool. I was like such a little witch. I love it. I, I love it. I'm like, oh my God. I'm amazing. So I literally was loving myself. I was like, I love myself. I'm fucking awesome. Anybody would be lucky to have me. And if things don't work out with someone, it's because I deserve more. I deserve the best. I am the best. I need to love myself how I want to show the world love. I need to show myself that love. And I am showing myself that love. But I also need to not settle for just anybody just because of a few things that I like. I the right person will come at the right time and everything will flow how it's supposed to flow so this morning I ended up going to urgent care I did walk my happy ass to Publix and I did get a public sub um which I normally wouldn't because I'm gluten-free but I ate it anyway and I and it was amazing and I got myself a little smoothie I planted a smoothie and it was great it was fucking awesome now I had asked Tefa, the shaman, if she could take me to the springs. I really wanted to go to the springs because originally the location was going to be by a springs. And um, she said, okay, as long as they were done cleaning everything up by noon. They weren't. They got backed up. It did rain on and off all day. And they weren't done till three. So I was like, damn, I really want to go to the springs. Like, I can't believe I'm going to leave Florida and not have gone to the springs. That's all I wanted. I wanted to come here for my birthday in May and go to the springs. I love the springs when I meditate and they say, go to your happy place. I think of the springs, cold springs, spring water, Florida, natural springs. So I'm sitting here in my room and I'm like, fuck, like I leave tomorrow and I didn't get to go to the springs. There's no way. Now I will say on the way back from Publix, my Uber driver starts talking to me and he tells me, um, I start asking him like, oh, so, you know, like, how's your day been? Um, he started at 5 a.m. and I'm like, oh, do you? I'm guessing around that time you only really have people going like to and from work kind of thing or like uh what was it to the airport or something and he was like oh there's so many different things and he starts telling me all different things and then he tells me yeah I've had really long distance drives like I've driven four hours before like uber drive someone I'm like what he was like yeah and then he'll tell me like how much he made off those drives he's like I make good money off them so I don't care I'm like is it worth it? Does it bounce out? He's like, oh yeah, it's not that bad. It would be better if on the way back somebody needed to come up, then it would really bounce out, but it's fine. I was like, wow, I'm so surprised. I really didn't think that like Uber or Lyft drivers were willing to drive that far. Um, So when I'm sitting here trying to figure out what I'm going to do because I really want to go to the Springs, I Google nearest Springs to me. Uh, I didn't realize we're not very close to a spring. The nearest spring is an hour away. And I was like, fuck, I thought we'd be close. Like we're in Tampa. Like, what do you mean? There's no springs. No, an hour away. So I was like, okay, great. So I'm looking through the springs and guess which one comes up? Wiki Wachi. If you guys don't know what Wiki Wachi is, look it up. Wiki Wachi has the girls who are mermaids who perform as mermaids with the mermaid tail under the water. If you haven't watched Mer People on Netflix, watch it. I have always wanted to go to Wiki Wachi Springs. Always wanted to go to Wiki Wachi. I'm like, oh my god, I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. The fact that I'm only an hour away, I was like, let me check how much an Uber costs. Forty two dollars. Only forty two dollars to go an hour away. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, it's going to cost me $100 probably there and back. I don't care. I don't care. I am going to the fucking Springs. I'm going to get my happy ass up at 7 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. I'm going to call myself an Uber and I'm taking myself to the Springs in the morning. I called and I said, hi, I just want to make sure because I'm far away. Do you guys have the mermaids tomorrow? She said, yes, the mermaids will be performing at 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock. I will be watching the 11 o'clock showing. They open at 9 o'clock. If I could just be there from like nine to noon, that's perfect. Three hours at the Springs is great. It's a great amount of time. I will watch them. She's like, um, so, but only swimming, only swimming allowed tomorrow. And I was like, as opposed to what? And she was like, the lazy river isn't going to be open or the slides. Oh, they have slides. They have slides in a lazy river. I love the lazy river. Rock Springs has a lazy river. I was like, oh man, I really want to go on the slides. But honestly, I don't care. See, see how I always want more. I always want more. Oh, I get the mermaids and the swimming, but I want slides now. Bitch, the other springs don't have slides. I only wanted to go swimming in a spring. Now I get to go swimming in a spring and get the mermaids who showed up in my vision during my journey. 
That's why they showed me the mermaids. And like, I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm very, very grateful. I'm so grateful I get to do this. Why? Because my flight doesn't leave until 5.20 p.m. My birthday, 5.20. My flight doesn't leave until 5.20 p.m. I have the whole morning free. What am I going to do? Sit here and waste it? I was like, damn, I could have gone today. No, everything's happening in divine timing. Today, you had to go to the doctor to get your antibiotics. Tomorrow, I'm getting up early and I'm going to the springs. I'm going to be there from 9 till about 12, 1230. I'm going to come back. I'm going because it's an hour back drive. Take a shower, pack my shit. My shit's already pre pretty much packed. Just pack um, the rest of it. Head on over to the airport and catch a flight. Um, Literally, this is what I'm saying. You, this is God showing me. See, I told you when you stop trying to plan everything, the things will just happen. I mean, obviously I'm planning this, but if everything went according to plan today, we would have ended up going to a different Springs and I would have missed this opportunity. This is literally perfect. This is why things work out the way, things always work out the way that they're supposed to. And we have to stop trying to control everything because now... I get to be spontaneous. I get to go on this little adventure by myself and I'm going to have a fucking blast. I'm healing my inner child, going to see the mermaids and I can't fucking wait. Oh my God, I'm so freaking excited. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So there it is, you guys. Whew. There's the third ayahuasca journey for you. It was beautiful. It was full of love. It was gentle. It was soft. It sh I shed more of my old self of insecurities relinquish control and learn to go with the flow now we just have to apply what we learn and move forward and let's see what else is in store because oh my gosh it's gonna be a wild fucking journey this is just the beginning this is just the beginning and i'm so 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 grateful that i am here i'm so grateful that i did it i'm so grateful because I said, this is third and done, third and done, I'm not coming back. And then I'm like, ah, I'll probably end up coming back. I'm gonna end up coming back. I'm definitely gonna do another journey at some point for sure. We'll just see when it, when she calls me again. But I, I, I can't say, I can't say ne never say never, never say never because damn, here we are. Life is so unpredictable, you never know. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you made it to the end, be like, damn girl, hold on, hold on. Remember last time I was like, aren't you glad I didn't say banana? I always say, I always tell you guys to say something at the end. Um, hold on, what do I want to say? Okay, if you made it to the end, be like, damn girl, not the diaper. That way, when people go to see the comments, they'll be like, diaper, huh? And then they'll want to watch. Okay, so if you made it to the end, be like, damn girl, not the diaper. <laughs> okay, that's what we're doing. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you guys are interested in getting any of this information, um, definitely put some information like in the info uh, description. Um, definitely find her on Instagram. Hit me up, whatever. You know I got you. You know what? I got you, about. <laughs> Anyways, all right, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye. Legend tells us these undersea people were known as mermaids. They swim gracefully and with little effort in their beautiful sea kingdom. They live a happy and gentle life. It's a wonderful place to live and usually uneventful. But today is not an ordinary day. Everyone in the kingdom has gathered for a very special event. The Little Mermaid is about to celebrate her 15th birthday, and it will be a very festive event indeed, filled with laughter, song, and dance. Let's celebrate, everyone!
blind? Have you lost your mind? Don't you know I can destroy your kind? Oh, no, Your Grace. Your, your terribleness. I'm not crazy or lost, but I must confess. I need your help. There's something you must do. Please grant me the favor that I ask of you. I'm so happy to finally be with you. Will you marry me and live in my kingdom forever? Sir, <laughs> 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 <laughs>